it's tulip season now. We're all starting to plant our tulips. I'm going to give you some top tips on how to choose the best perennial tulips, how to make your tulips come back every year, how to avoid tulip fire and how to avoid squirrels. And finally, I talked to Martin Duncan about lasagna planting. Is it really worth it? Does it make a difference? He'll tell us all the information on it. I've got this pot of tulips here and I'm going to plant them and these are Carnival Denise and these are a nice white with a pink stripe and the dark sort of crimsony pink stripe and they're really blousy they're flamboyant and I think that's the fabulous thing about tulips you could, there are so many varieties to try you can try all different ones and you can't be too brash and garish I don't think with the tulip but if you want to be subtle you can be but they come after all the yellows of the daffodils and winter aconites and things like that so somehow I do tend to avoid the yellows but that's not to say you have to. Now when you buy a tulip they do come in different sizes and lots of people recommend that you buy a top size so the top size have to be bigger than 10 to 12 millimeters in diameter and you can see these are almost three centimeters or 30 millimeters so these are a nice top size and what happens with the top size bulb is you get a bigger flower now obviously the first year you plant them you get the lovely big flower and then when they come up the next year because they will have made some little bulbs and the big one will not be there so big you'll find that you look the flowers are much shorter and smaller and I actually don't mind that because I think they look more naturalistic when they come the, the second years and subsequent years but then if you add in a few new ones again you get a good gradation of sizes anyway I'm going to plant these tulips here now if you want to make them repeat flower one of the crucial things is to plant them deep and it's reckoned they should have 10 to 15 centimeters of soil on top so that's a fair amount now I'm going to plant these all on one level and you'll see later why that is so I've got about 25 bulbs here and I'm just going to pop them in close together now tulip come from sort of Central Asia to Southern Europe so they come from very hot dry places and obviously in the UK and other parts of the world where we love tulips then it's not those conditions so some people find that actually when you plant tulips in a surprising setting such as under the light canopy of a tree in soil not with grass just with soil and other ground cover herbaceous around it that because it's so much drier there they actually get much better repeat flowering so that's a very good tip so if you've got an orchard area or an area under a hedge or something like that you might find that you will actually get much better repeat flowering and plants that I think or varieties that I like in those sort of situations that seem to do really well are mistress mystic spring green um, negrita is good like that purissima Alba is um, a, a Fosteriana type tulip and that has quite good repeat flowering qualities. So therefore, look for the sunny, dry places. Now, um, obviously under a tree it's not that sunny, but it can be pretty sunny if you have a, a light canopy. Another thing is they need lots of energy to reflower again. So when they start to not close up at night and the petals start to droop down as the flower's about to go over, then you want to actually cut the top off, just cut the flower off and leave the stalk. So they've got lots of energy to um, reflower the next year and they're not putting that energy up into um, carry on making seeds or whatever. Now species tulips are also meant to be very good for um, perennial planting um, but I find here I've got tulip per sylvestris and um, it, although the foliage comes up every year only very occasionally do I get flowers and then not many of them. So I've planted them nice and deep here and I'm now going to put and the compost I'm using is a multi-purpose compost and I put some vermiculite in it to give it a bit more free draining I have planted it in a pot inside this beautiful stone font because 
it's got no drainage in the font obviously but I've got drainage in this black plastic pot so it will drain and drainage is important for tulips um, and then I'm going to put on top the same now you can see I've planted them all very closely cheek by jowl right up touching each other um, I don't know if you can see them from there and that is important because I want lots and lots of lovely flowers and then I'm just going to put this compost on top good depth on the top and it's the same mix again it's a nice, nice gritty compost and it will just go on right to the top of the pot now when you plant tulips obviously in this country your main problem is usually the squirrel and the squirrel will very quickly find these in the winter and they'll come and just leave you a few bits of the old bulb on the top if you're lucky so what i do obviously if it's in a pot it's fairly simple you can just put netting of any sort on the top hello beetle have you come to plant a tulip um and um you can do that but if it's in the ground then it's not so easy because i'll plant a whole load of tulips in this rose meadow behind me and i can't put netting over the whole lot so what i do instead is I get this cayenne powder and what I do is I just put a little bit on the top so imagine this is in the ground so with a teaspoon I just buy it in bulk and it's pretty cheap and this left over from last year and you just put on each bulb so imagine this is in the ground and there's tulips here I'd put it on top of the tulip the match and then I'll put a tiny bit of the cayenne around it and then that will last for if it's really rainy it will probably last for two or three weeks and the reason i put the match there is because then of course i know where to repeat the application of kn now that's so that's one tip in in how to get them perennial um, or a few tips now the other thing is tulip fire tulip fire is a, a pain it really is it's, it's a disease it's a fungal disease it's a type of botrytis and and um, if you get it you have to sort of stop planting tulips for quite a few years but what I do is I usually I buy my favorite tulips that I really want early on the season so I've got them but then when it comes to January and you look through the sales you can obviously often buy amazing tulips at knockdown prices often 50% of the amount now you won't have the choice of tulips that you would if you'd order them back in August September October um, but it does mean that when you put them in late the tulips are in the ground less long so they're less subjected to getting botrytis or tulip fire so I often do that and I'll buy get them early but then I plant them as late as I dare and actually when you plant them later on in January they are every bit as good as if you planted them earlier on so I don't think there's a problem at all so now I've planted all these in a single layer why haven't I done lasagna planting which would be in three layers one on top of the other We'll go and chat to Martin Duncan, who plants around 80,000 tulips every year, and find out his view on lasagna planting. So I'm with Martin Duncan. Martin, I remember you showing me around your amazing tulip gardens a couple of springs ago, maybe three ago, at Arund Arundel oh. Castle in Sussex. You're the head gardener there, and you have the Tulip Festival every spring, which has been going for how long, many years? Uh, well, I actually started it in about eight years ago and we put in, in the last 10 years, we've put in over 1.2 million bulbs, uh, but wow. that's not tulips, not uh, all tulips, all tulips um, you know, from camassias to snake's head pretillaries and, and uh, I love a mixture of camassias, snake's head, thalia, white narcissus um, and a multitude and we do at least 160 different named tulips every year. Wow, and you are just waiting for a delivery of, was it 800,000 tulips you said? Oh, not 800,000, 80,000, 80, 80, yeah. <laughs> I think my staff might string me up. <laughs> so, uh, so how, how long will it take you to plant 80,000 tulips? How many can one man plant in an hour, do you reckon? You must have worked it out. <laughs> Uh, well, it's a bit more difficult than that because we plant through the grass, we plant on the banks of the castle, uh, we plant in a labyrinth, uh, um, and actually the main displays of the wedding cake and uh, around the roundhouse where it's nicely sort of dug over soil, uh, you know, within uh, 
two days you can put in 16,000, but when it comes to the banks... Two days, slowly, slowly, two days, 16,000. So how <laughs> many tulips do you reckon a man can plant an hour in nice conditions? Uh, in nice conditions, oh, in an hour, uh, probably about the way we plant. Uh, what I have is one man with a dibber and the other man popping them in or one of... Um, so I normally kept in the grass, I have the, um, the chaps who are slightly heftier jumping up and down on pogo sticks. Um, and uh, then I've got uh, the lighter gardeners planting them. Um, so that that we'd be looking at probably few probably three four hundred uh, uh -oh. in, in an hour. Yeah. But you can only do that sort of intensity for a few hours a day. So we tend to find all the bulbs are planted by around about the fifteenth of December. So, so only do the tulips from November. Right. Okay. Right. So when you said pogo sticks, you mean those long bulb planters. So they push yeah. them in, pull the yeah. plug out. The other guy comes behind, pops yeah. it in, yeah. and then puts the plug back on top, top. which has yeah. been pushed out from the thing, from the bulb. And, and uh, I literally uh, use an angle grinder and make sure that those pogo sticks are like razor blades. And right. then also I've got my welder who then welds a plate on top so it doesn't cut through your feet uh, right. so you literally hop on them and that yeah. makes such a difference right i must get out my <laughs> angle grinder thank you very much indeed <laughs> yeah. so um that that's amazing so you obviously know all about tulips but what i picked up particularly from when i interviewed you was that you yeah. said you thought lasagna planting actually was just a fabulous name and a fabulous <laughs> And the reason that that technique has really taken off is because of the name. But actually, you didn't find it made any difference whether you planted your bulbs in three layers as the lasagna planting or in yeah. one layer, the same quantity. Now, just yeah. to just to um, make sure that everybody knows what lasagna planting is, <laughs> it's basically following the traditional dish. You, you plant your one layer of bulbs. And then you put about 50 mil of compost on top. Then you do another layer of bulbs, about 50 mil of compost, and then the final layer of bulbs. The, yeah. and the, it's promoted as actually meaning that you can get more bulbs into a container. And Helen Dillon famously sort of really took this to new level, didn't she? She yeah. had about, was it 100 dustbins or something? Or maybe it was, no, maybe it was 25 dustbins and she planted 70 tulips per dustbin and she had a display over six or seven weeks but you don't do that do you don't do that explain, at all explain what what why you don't do that right um well there's a few things if you've got one bulb underneath another and they're too thickly planted one's trying to push up the other um but also it's a time scale thing i i plant 500 pots here with my staff so 500 pots is quite a lot um, and the speed in which we can do it and get the same results, we, we literally plant our bulbs cheek by jowl, all on the same level, but we use mixers. So I can, I can have hyacinths, I can have um, crown imperials in the middle and all the tulip, a tulip mix uh, throughout. So I, I could have uh, all the angelique blue diamond uh, you know in one mix um, and then when when i also do i sometimes do a wide range of mixes throughout so like the daily news mix in, in pots looks amazing as well as in the landscape but um those that's you've got passionale mistress uh, paul shearer gascoigne it sounds like a football team going on and then in the middle i'll have um a uh, uh, purple dream or burgundy, which is a beautiful lily flower tulip, and that gives a bit of height. So I can do that all on the same level with just as many tulips. So, um, uh, so I'll have at least about 65 to 70 in a large terracotta pot, um, and you get that stunning display, and you can get longevity that way as well. Yeah, no, I found that fascinating. And um, because you told me that at home, yeah. I went and did one plant with lasagna planting, and uh -huh. the other, sorry, one pot with lasagna oh, planting yeah. and then another pot in an almost identical position, yeah. just putting them all on one layer, using the same mix of three different tulip bulbs. 
And I have to say there was a subtle difference. I think the ones when I put them all on one layer, they yeah. actually came up thicker and faster. And I yeah. think this is probably due to the com competition going on. They are planted, you say, all, uh, almost touching when you put them yeah. all. I had 70 bulbs in a 60 centimeter diameter pot. And so they were almost touching. Um, what I, and, but apart from that, that, that the ones all on one layer came up faster, yeah. Um, there was actually precious little difference. And you think exactly the same, do you? A hundred percent, because if you think of bulbs, I, I planted some bulbs um, for tulips. If you want them to come year, year after year uh, in the in the garden, then you want to plant them quite deep, four inches at least. Yes. But um, having said that, if you planted a tulip three inches for the just in a pot or four inches or five inches, um, if they're an early flowering tulip, they'll come early doesn't really matter what depth they are as a whole um, and the same the same with a mid flowering or a late flowering tulip um, there's going to be very minimal difference uh, Helen so, Dillon uh, agrees with this she says it makes yeah. no difference what you put in what layer they'll just yeah. come up when they come up exactly yeah, they, they, they've got that nucleus there and they, they know what time they should flower and uh, it's yeah. really kind of interesting and what I, what I didn't realize is that you said you watered your pots three times a week and those tulips growing no. in that density are thirsty thirsty aren't they Very. So, and i didn't i just watered mine once a week with two gallons per 60 centimeter pot what sort of quantity yeah. are you putting on at three times? well um what i do is i i call it and i i always tell my staff do the finger check so yeah. i know it sounds, sounds strange but you know you put your finger in and check how moist it is or how dry it is and of course we put a bit of drainage in the bottom of our pots as well um, so if it's a big 60 centimeter i don't fill it all with compost i use a bit of mypex um, and a bit of uh, uh, stuff underneath the mypex um, so i'm not wasting too much compost because that's, so people, that's just, sorry to interrupt just for people who yeah. don't want mypex is it's just basically a fabric um, yeah. which people use as a weed um, barrier and things like that. So you can use anything with, couldn't you? You yeah. just don't want the compost to go through to the polystyrene or whatever you've got exactly. below that, which is basically packing out the pot. Yeah. We normally yeah. do put polystyrene and we just put the mypex on top, but we don't do it too high, but then that saves you a bit of compost. Yes. But then again, you haven't got as much uh, soil. Um, so... We only do that with our very, very large pots. And um, no, what I found is if tulips are in full flower, um, right at the beginning, I don't water them, but it's only when they sort of getting halfway and then we might do it once a week. You mean and halfway then, by half out of the pot? Half the height, yeah. And yeah. then I'll start doing a bit of watering and then that'll be once a week and then they'll go to twice a week. And then when they fully out, it'll be three times. I've actually, um had a you know where we've had 70 bulbs in a pot uh where actually the the uh, flowers have um gone to wilting point because they weren't watered so so you know you learn lessons in horticulture all the time so we do finger checking whether it's for spring bulbs uh or or for uh, summer so just so, two questions then so for a 60 70 millimeter diameter pot um yeah. 700 millimeter diameter pot what yeah. sort of um quantity will it be a two gallon can about or yeah 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 and just yeah water water them and i always do them obviously below the tulip if, if they're in flower because tulips hate to <laughs> wet from a from a from the top yeah. and um you can also give them a bit of a feed that that won't do it any harm either you know whether it's liquid seaweed or whatever feed you like uh, it won't do it any harm mix it in with the water um, and that will give them a little bit of a boost as well but uh, we always get big sized tulips here as well uh, so they come yeah <laughs> so when you look at a bulb catalog not not all bulb catalogs have them but there are different sizes of tulips and the top size what is the top size tulip Ooh, you've got me there i'd have to look in the book <laughs> but, the but size, I always they are the biggest flowers aren't they the best bulbs Definitely the biggest flowers and the best bulbs. And, you know, when you buy tulips, have a look at the tulip. Make sure there aren't blemishes on it, um, you know, because that's where the trouble starts. 
Um, so here I always look out, I always rotate my tulips as well. So in the big displays, I'm not going to grow tulips in the bow tie beds every single year. I'm because going to the use fire the blight is your main. Fire, yeah, yeah, we read the fungus. Which yeah. They got it at Highgrove, didn't they? Because Prince, oh, King Charles used to plant yeah. masses of tulips in the meadow. Yeah. And then they had to stop because of fire blight. Yes. Yes, you 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 can. Um, I mean, I've had it where I've taken a whole display out of 3000 tulips um, and that stopped it spreading to other areas. So right. as long as you're vigilant and the same in the grass, if, if you quite vigilant and you see the first sign, uh, I first experienced it when I was um, running or managing the gardens at Audley End. Um, and uh, of course we planted the parterre and we had the first ever tulip festival for English heritage and um, it did really well for about three years and then we had this tulip fire. Initially I thought I'd bred a new tulip but unfortunately <laughs> I hadn't. Um, so I learned a big lesson from that mm. and yeah we have had tulip fire but as soon as I've seen it I've nipped it in the bud. And um, so if you see any bulbs on your planting that are marked or damaged, don't plant yeah. them. Is that is that? What yeah, if, if they're really badly damaged, it's, it's not, you know, if there's just the odd cut or something like that. It, it's if you get one which is mouldy um, and it has a lot of blemishes um, and, and looks like a really poor bulb, I'd recommend uh, removing it and not planting it. Right, a salutary lesson. Lovely, thank you very much indeed. Um, it's right. been fascinating talking to you. And I'm now gonna go and plant some tulips. <laughs> so there's my first pot of tulips in for this year. I'm gonna plant them in the meadow. I'm gonna plant more in this rose meadow. I'm gonna do lots and lots of pots. And if I've just got one or two odd bulbs over, then you can just put one bulb in a tiny wee pot. And it's a lovely present for someone or to go on the kitchen table. So enjoy, go flashy and flamboyant and choose the brightest ones that you dare.